Good afternoon everyone, John Cheatham down in the 3 Amnes Golf Academy. Uh, Tuesday tips has now moved to Wednesday. We've had a really busy weekend uh, with the Laserwood Golf Gala dinner, which was fantastic. We had um, nearly 100 ladies attend on the weekend, so if you were, uh, if you did attend the dinner, thank you so much for coming along. Uh, on the back of the gala dinner, we've then had a Cheshire coaching break, uh, so hence we've shoved our Tuesday tips into Wednesday. Uh, the rest of the coaches are out there on the golf course with the ladies now, uh, which leave myself in here to talk through some, some tips. Uh, we've got a nice theme today, um, so any questions you've got, please comment in the box below. Uh, share via the links below as well to get uh, everyone watching. Uh, the video is going great so far, so that's really good feedback. Uh, so please do keep commenting and sharing, uh, and we'll keep trying to grow this, this Tuesday tips each week, which is now Wednesday today. So, Today, guys, I'm, I'm going to talk about, uh, on the back of our Cheshire coaching break, we had another 10 ladies uh, at Carden Park yesterday. The theme for today is, is really trying to adapt your game to the winter months. So, as we've noticed now, it's been a little bit colder, uh, and certainly out on the golf course yesterday, I, I managed to play alongside the ladies, which was brilliant, uh, and Rob Blunt was out there playing as well. And we noticed a real difference in the yardage on the golf ball, so, and how much this affects your distance in the winter months. So, what I'm going to do today is going to talk about the level of how the coldness does affect the golf ball uh, and where you can adjust this to make sure your distance control is a lot more consistent through the winter months. So what I'm going to demonstrate in a second is with the help of Trapman, um, we can change the temperature setting on the Trapman unit. So today I've set it to zero degrees, which is pretty much the temperature we played in yesterday. Uh, and hopefully you'll see just what effect that has on on the golf ball. I'm going to hit a few shots, I've been trying it out this morning, uh, so I've got a few seven irons here uh, and that's going to give my carry distance. So really if I've got a good idea of how far I'm carrying the ball, uh, adjusting to the winter conditions, I'm going to have a great chance of hitting it in line with the flag, on the green, getting my two putts and moving on. So in a second I'm going to hit a few shots and uh, we're going to get some, get some yardages to start with. So I'm going to hit my seven iron here. Uh, so seven iron for me, you know, on the golf course, it can really change in summer and winter. But I'm going to hit a few shots away just, uh, just to get us loosened up here. So I've got the trap man set to zero, get some nice smooth swings. There we go, so 126, nice and smooth carry. Got a bit more roll with that. Should that a little bit better, that one there. Yeah, perfect. So, Two good examples there, so that ball has carried 139 yards uh, with the temperature set to zero. Now, on, in the summer months, I anticipate hitting my golf ball with a 7 iron to be more like 160. So you can see I'm, I'm already 20 yards down on my usual distance, and this is what I was finding yesterday on the golf course for myself. I was really thinking I could get there with the club, so I'm on the program to being on them summer yardages. But if you adapt and just allow for this extra um, distance you, know, you need because it's cold, um, it's wet, we're wearing more layers which we're going to come on to in a second, but I think if we can really just club up a little bit in the winter then you're going to find your scores will, will become a lot lower because you're going to be in line with the flag. So I'm going to try another one here, let's try another one with the seven lines, so nice and smooth. So I'm not hitting too hard, not too soft, just nice and smooth there, and again 143.6, so this is great because that now I know in the winter months my usual seven iron yardage of 160 is coming right down to 143. So that's where I can then allow for that and just take a club more or even two club more on the, on the golf course. So when you're out there playing winter golf, uh, really you know, assess the shot. You've got many factors which are making the ball reduce the distance. So you've got, like I said, um, it's cold. The ground might be a little bit wet. So you know you're difficult to get the strike. Also, you're wearing a lot more layers as well, and this is what I was chatting to the ladies on the course yesterday. You know, what do, what do we wear on the golf course? You know, the best advice for me would be to try and wear um, thinner layers, but more of them. So it's better to wear two, three, you know, four layers that are quite thin. If you start getting the big bulky layers on, then you won't be able to turn as much on the back swing. So you're not going to get the swing speed, and get another reason why you're going to hit that ball a little shorter. So really, you know, winter, winter is key. If you're going to play consistent golf, allow for the change of conditions. You won't hit the ball as far. You know, often by my situation here, look 20 yards, 20 yards less. So I'm going to have to go up two clubs there. 
And if I've got a situation on the golf course where maybe I've got um, an incline to the green, then that's another club. If it's a bit windy, another club again. So I'll try another one there, just another, another stab nine, take one more away. There we go again. So pretty spot on really, you know, 136 again. So it's that 20 yard less. So ask yourself now, you know, how far do you guys at home hit your seven iron? And then reduce that number, you know, on my base, I'm reducing it by 15, sometimes 20 yards. Uh, so, you know, adopt the distance accordingly, change the club, and then hopefully that will make you hit the ball more in line with the flag on the green. From our coaching break yesterday, myself and Rob, you know, a lot of times we've seen just the wrong club selection and the ball was coming up 20 yards short and it's difficult to get the ball to chip it on the green, often because it's quite wet around the greens in the winter. So, you know, get to your ball, assess the yardage, and then you can really club up one, two, sometimes even three clubs. You know, it doesn't matter as long as you get the, the ball in line with the hole. So one, two, three clubs more, and then you'll be in line with the flag, and that'll produce more consistent, uh, more consistent golf. So, you know, key, key thing from yesterday, the layers down, guys. So get the, get the layers really thin, two, three, four layers. Keep nice and warm, but we don't want to restrict the turn. Get to your yardage, find the distance, and then add in, allow for the coldness, maybe the incline, the cold wind, massively affects the yardage, as I've shown here. That goes throughout the bag, whether it's a driver, parry, pitch and wedge, you know, it's all the same. You've got to take them clubs more to try and get a little bit more consistency in the winter months. So that's the key thing from the last two days um, at Cardon Park there. Uh, and on the second round, when we, when we suggested them changing, we saw some real success with, you know, improving of the scores and getting the distance control more consistent. So hence, the, you know, there were a lot better scoring there when we had a chat about the clubbing. And certainly myself and Rob were caught out on the first day, just, you know, didn't appreciate how much less the ball travels in the winter. So real biggie that for uh, the winter months, club up, and then you'll get your decent distance control there. Okay, doke. So, so a couple of quick tips there. Uh, so I believe we do have some questions on this as well. So uh, some winter, winter golf questions. So I'll take any questions. Any questions you've got at home now, guys, if you are tuned in at work or watching on your phone, anything at all, just comment in the box below or share and I'll be able to answer anything while we've got a little bit of time now. Yes, yeah, so there's one question. Is that, does, the, uh, does the same apply to summer, as in will the ball go further? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yeah, a good question. Uh, and the simple answer is yes. I'll elaborate a little bit more on that. But um, opposite does apply. Um, we do have, let's say we're playing the height of summer or even abroad even, you know, huge difference completely the other way. So, you know, I've played a couple of coaching breaks uh, this year as well uh, in Portugal where the temperature has been 28, uh, 28 degrees. And I would say on some holes, I've been hitting seven iron up to 175 yards, uh, which compared to the 136 yards there of the winter month is a, is a massive difference. So it does apply. Um, if you think about this in the summer, what we've got, we're wearing just a t-shirt. So we've got a freer golf swing, often linked a bit more club speed. Uh, the air is nice and warm. So we're gonna get more, more distance, it's gonna go through the air. And often the ground, well, remember guys, in the summer it's nice and firm. So when it, when it hits the ground, you're going to get a bounce, you're going to get a roll. Uh, so again, producing greater distance. So for me personally, in the summer months, you know, it's not normal that I would get 170, 175 yards if I hit my seven iron. And then fast forward to December, and I'm at my seven iron, 136 yards. So you've really got to take that in consideration, guys. Don't just think your seven iron is one yardage all year round. It will fluctuate particularly in this country we've got such dramatic seasons. So, yeah, good question, but I think uh, a lot further than someone wants that. Yeah, so Daryl's just asked kind of around that, that area. Do, do you change the type of ball you use according to wind or winter conditions? Yeah, so. another good question there. So, uh, you can definitely look at the, the, the change in the ball. Um, obviously, the harder golf ball is going to give you a little bit more, more distance off the face. You know, it's going to spring off the face a little bit more. Um, so definitely maybe look to go to a slightly harder ball, golf ball in the, in the, if it's calm but a little bit cold to get a little bit more power for the face. The other thing you might want to look at as well is the, the dimples on the golf ball. Um, the greater the amount of dimples, the more spin you're going to get. So the greater spin, the more it's going to compress off the face. Again, a little bit more, more distance, the ball will rotate more, the revolution per minute will be up, so you're going to get a greater carry distance with the more dimples. So, 
You know, there's plenty of uh, manufacturers that are great at the moment. The golf ball perhaps never been better. They've all got little variations. So again, don't just think one golf ball, you know, is right for you in the summer and the winter. You know, speak to your, your pro there. Look at your swing speed to see how you can change the golf ball through the year to maximize your, your distance. So yeah, definitely a golf ball would change in the summer and the winter there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, got a question from, uh, from Josh, uh, John. Uh, you spoke a lot about actual temperature. What about slope? Slope on the yeah, slope on the golf course. So uh, hitting uphill, downhill. How, how do you judge that um, the, yard, the actual change in yardage? Due yeah. To so, uh, so again, um, with myself, when when I'm getting, um, let's put that back on there. So this, I mean, Carter Park was a good example this weekend. On the back nine, we had a couple of slopey, slopey greens there. So personally, I would go. I would definitely just club up one more when I'm looking at an incline, uh, 20, 30 foot up. Definitely one club up more there. Uh, combine that with the, the coldness, the wet, the slope's a massive reason. You know, if you think when you're getting your yardage, you know, let's say it's 150 yards flat, if it's 150 yards with a steep incline, I'd definitely go up one more club there uh, just to allow for that incline going up. On the flip side of that, guys, when you've got the slope down, just expect that ball to go a little bit further. So, you kind of get the ball's going to land and then roll uh, to go carry more when it gets on the ground. So definitely slope, uh, another impact, another factor which will make you go up or down. So the best advice I've, I've got for you guys is when you get to the golf ball, just assess the, as we said today, the, the weather conditions um, and then the slope as well with the wind. And you can go up and down by one, two, maybe even three clubs. So that's a, a good one to try there. Okay, I do believe we've got a late visitor. Is coming from coaching, Rob. Nice Rob. to see you. Hi guys. Uh, so I just uh, yeah just come in there. Just got the back end of that. That's a real real important one. I think I've spent a lot of time of late. Great couple of days with John at Carlton Park. Yeah. But um, a lot of time, a lot of um, the last few weeks I've been spending doing end of season walking the golf courses, uh, some on course yeah. reporting with lots of players, young golfers, adults, um, and some very elite level players. And one of the common things that we've seen is they're all looking at yardage. How far is it? They've got lots of, we've got bushnells now and the GPS devices. The big thing which I'm saying to them is how far is it playing? Yeah. That's a huge one. Not just what's the actual yardage, how far is it playing? Yeah. A couple of uh, examples at Cardham uh, last couple of days, there's, uh, quite a, there's quite a lot of elevation change 16, there. 16, yeah, 16. Yeah, 16 up that, that slope, yeah. um, that, par, four, that par 5 of the hill as yeah, well. 14. So on the bushnell or whatever device you're using, yeah. they say 150. But that can be actually playing, if you're going up, uphill there yeah. with wind and temperature, yeah. that can be playing more like 190 to 200 yeah. yards. So it's yeah. really important to ask that question, how yeah. far is it playing, not yeah. just how far is it. Work it out, ask yeah. the caddy. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and it can go like, say, one, two, three, four clubs up. So don't just say your seven iron is one distance all year round. See from this country, guys, great tip from us. Um, play for the conditions. What it says on the bushel or your sky caddy or your watch, isn't the actual yardage you need to subtract and, and add depending on what time of year you're playing. So yeah. yeah. I believe some of the actual new devices now actually give you a calculation of slope yeah, as do, well. Yeah. So uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Great. Yeah. So yeah, so anything else from you there, Rob? Any, no, I don't think so. Sorry, I just uh, I feel quite passionate about that because I've seen lots of golfers the last couple of days leaving well short. Yeah. Very rarely we see golfers going past. Yeah. Uh, quite often with the golf course designs as well, they put all the trouble short, all the yeah. bunkers, short left, short right, in the middle. Yeah. Very, you know, very rarely that is, a, is the danger yeah. long. So yeah. club up, get it packed, get it up to the flag. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. The, the last two days, I can't give many. In fact, not in no occasions where myself or even the amateur players hit it long with the flag. So we are always underestimating that, yeah. that distance towards the ball. Uh, and I just showed you here until the, the zero degree second, 136 yards. 20 yards short of where I would normally hit my 7 iron. Sure. Um, and that goes the same, you know, if you top Rory McIlroy's played in zero degree, don't think he's going to hit that 7 iron, 180 yards, it just wouldn't happen. You know, they, you, you often see on the TV, I think, they're playing in America, they follow the sun. That's yeah. why they're hitting these, these big distances. But if, unfortunately, guys, if you're playing in this country and not follow the sun, yeah. then we're going to have to allow for that change of distance, which is, you know, a lot, lot shorter. So just accept that and just you'll play better Definitely golf. Definitely as well. These guys as well, they, they tend to strike it extremely well every single time. Yeah. Lots of uh, the club golfers, you know, we, yeah, our, our Sunday best may take it that distance, but if we don't quite strike it, we lose a massive amount of yardage as yeah. well. So Definitely. perhaps just, yeah, club up.
Yeah, I think about them there. Also, as well, on that theme with the golfers, we see lots of golfers using log wedges and sand wedges around the greens. Yeah. Uh, in this winter time, yeah, yeah, which it's, it's dropping, it's stopping. Just yeah, that's probably a theme for the next couple of weeks. I think. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and some we're going to bounce and roll. So. Uh, Daryl's just uh, elaborated on that point. He's just uh, just asked, tight and wet lies around the green. Do you recommend using less lock pitches and the putter more? Tight and wet lies around the greens. We need to look at uh, we need to look at the actual um, yeah the loft, but also the bounce of the golf club. If, if we're on a real tight wet lie around the green. We don't want to be opting for a club such as uh, maybe a lob wedge or a pitching wedge where the actual bottom angle here, as John demonstrates, is quite sharp. Yeah. So we need, to, uh, we need to opt for a club there which has got uh, more bounce. The, you know, the less bounce we have, it digs in. Yeah, this is, this is a no-go club for me here. And this is where, on the last couple of days, very valid question, uh, Daryl, but this is my lob wedge here, so very sharp here. So if we've got a wet, muddy lie, that's gonna dig right into the ground. It's not gonna re-enter. I'm just gonna duff that chip and it's not gonna get on the green. So um, avoid sharp, you know, clubs with little bounce. That's very, you know, very low bounce on that one here. So get get the pitching wedge, get a bit more bounce on it. You know, even get a, an eight time and do a little chip and run there. Just get it, get, it, get it running on the green. Avoid these clubs if you can in the winter, guys. It's gonna be very difficult to time it and get a decent strike. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Your sand has got the most bounce. Uh, so if it's, if it's a toss up between the sand or the pitching wedge, sand all day long. Sand wedge or log wedge, sand all day long. Definitely. If in doubt, let's get it running though. Eight yeah. iron, seven iron, or get the, get the putter on, get yeah. the flat stick on. One, one club uh, is quite interesting there. One, one club that I know a few of the guys have done quite well at Carden Park with, and a few of the ladies in the academy using quite successfully. When it's just off the green, on the fringe, maybe a little bit too far to put it, the hybrid's a good option. Hybrid's a to great get. option, just such a, a versatile yeah, goal. Really club. good, I and mean, that's never really spoke about too much. You might see some of the guys on tour using it, but you know, if you were to get your hybrid uh, and just almost use it as a, as a putter, so take your putting grip here, and then just a nice smooth action, very reliable, consistent stroke that, but the, the rescue club will just graze along the ground, little bump, it's got a little bit of loft in it, a little bit of height early. Then it's, it's got, got a kind of wide sole wear, so it is very yeah. much an undoffable golf club. Exactly, player, yeah. Never going to dig in, quite reliable that one. So we had some great success this weekend at Carlin Park with that one. So if, you, if you're not quite sure, give that a go. You'd be surprised how, how well and uh, reliable that club will be. So yeah, another good option there, Daryl, for that one around the greens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think we're uh, a good few questions there. So yeah, thank you for for putting your feedback in. As ever, in the week, you know, don't you have to wait until the, the tips Tuesday, which we'll be back on next week from. Uh, with an exception this week, we've been away from the academy. Yes, but please share it. Any question you've got in the meantime, if you can't watch uh, you know, at 12 o'clock your work, just place the comments on Facebook or any of our social media streams in the week and we'll do our best to, we'll answer them next Tuesday. So, you know, fantastic weekend though. Um, from. More the Ladies Academy here, the, the Gala dinner was brilliant, Cheshire, Cheshire uh, coaching brain was well, fantastic two days. Um, so as ever, thank you for all your feedback uh, and any questions of the week, do please comment. So apart from that. Yeah, have a fantastic week. Yeah, and we'll uh, be back next Tuesday. Podcast is good this week, guys. Bit yeah. crisp. Yes. Get out there and go for A few tips to try there, so get yeah, that yeah. on the course, guys, and we'll catch up with you soon. Brilliant. Cheers. Great.